Good morning, One Family Church. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it is such an honor to be here, and I feel like, you know, the parent is not at home, so we can actually party. <laughs> so I'm going to keep you here for four hours while I preach. <laughs> okay, so it is such an honor to speak today about one of my sheroes. And uh, I'd like to start off with a story of when I was 15. I'm, can, we, can I be real with you all? Okay, so when I was 15 and I was in ninth grade, I always wanted to be part of the popular girls. And see, so the popular girls had really nice skin. They had good hair. They smelled good. They looked good. They had good shoes. And um, yeah, they were very, very intelligent too. So I finally got into the ninth grade. I made it into the popular group. I mean, who could say no to me, right? <laughs> <laughs> what I didn't know is that the girls are very, very mischievous. So many of them started smoking, they started drinking, and they started getting in involved in a lot of senseless initiation activities. And so one time, I go into the girls' bathroom with the, with the popular girls, and we started smoking. I said, oh, we're going to keep it real here. And um, we started smoking, and I got one of the cigarette packets. I put it in my pocket that those days we wore uniforms to school. Um, I went home. I changed out of my clothes, but I had forgotten to remove the cigarette pack out of my pocket. So my mom comes home and she does laundry. And back in those days, we didn't have any washing machine, so we would actually hand wash things. And so she picks up my skirt, and to my horror, she finds the cigarette packs. So she called my dad, and let me just say that Papua New Guinean parents, they do not believe in naughty corners. They do not believe in timeouts. Um, but they do believe in the rod of discipline, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So all of this happened because I just wanted to fit in. I wanted to pretend uh, to be something that I wasn't. I wanted to fake it till I made it to be part of this group. And so any of you ever been in a situation where you felt that you needed to fake it? Yep. Where you had to pretend where if I just fake it, maybe I'll just make it. You're probably sitting here with your beautiful smiles on your faces, but deep down inside, there's some of you that are going through a lot of issues at home that no one knows about. You're dealing with a crisis that no one really knows about. There's depression, there's turmoil in your heart, there's anxiety, there's loneliness, there's anxiety, uh, fear that you're dealing with that no one really knows about. So you're sitting here just faking it, and it's embedded deep within your hearts. Some of you may be dealing with an unhealthy habit, a lifestyle or a past that keeps on haunting and you're thinking I need to put on my Sunday face and go to church and say praise the Lord hallelujah because if only he or she knew exactly what I was doing or what I was going through or what I did they would judge me and they would reject me so we're wondering what would happen if people knew the real me if I removed all of this makeup everything what would happen if people really knew the real me well today we're in a hero series and and we're going to talk about a shiro by the name of Rahab. And Rahab could not fake it because of her reputation. And we're going to talk about it. So this, the title of this sermon is called Faith in It. It's not fake in it, but it's called Faith in It. So in Joshua chapter 2 verse 1, this is where our story starts off. It said, And Joshua the son of Nun sent two men secretly from Shittim, okay, I said that very fast, so I'm not cussing or anything, as spies said, go view the land, especially Jericho. And they went and they came into a house of a prostitute whose name was Rahab, and they lodged there. So who was Rahab? Well, Rahab is taken from the name Ra. Ra is the name of an Egyptian god, so Rahab was a pagan. Her mom was a pagan, her dad was a pagan, everyone in the family is a pagan. And so she belonged to a, pe a people who worshiped other gods. Rahab was also a woman, so back in those days, women weren't treated as equally to men as they are still today. And Rahab, the Bible is very, very clear, Rahab was a prostitute. So she was a woman of the night, a woman of the streets, a woman of ill repute in society. And Rahab built her house in the wall that surrounded Jericho. See, walls at that time, they served for two purposes. They, they served to protect the inhabitants of a land and they also served to protect enemies. So Rahab's house was basically built on the outskirts of the city wall. They were built in a bad neighborhood. So if there was any kind of attack upon her and her family, they would be most vulnerable. And can you imagine the gossip that went on about Rahab when she went to town, when she went to the grocery stores, the stares that she got from people. So Rahab could not pretend to be someone else for the life of her. She could not fake it because her reputation as a prostitute 
It followed her everywhere. And so here's the back story. Joshua sends two spies to secretly scout the land of Jericho. This man go to Rahab's house, the king of Jericho. He hears about these spies and he sends a, Rahab, a word to Rahab and says, bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out all the land. And this is Rahab's response. She's like, true. The men came to me, but I did not know where they came from. And when the gate was about to be closed at dark, the men went out, and I do not know where the men went. Pursue them quickly, for you will overtake them. But she actually took them to the roof, and she hid them there. So Rahab not only was everything that, that I describe her to be, but she was a straight-out liar. <laughs> I love her. So once the messengers of the king of Jericho left, Rahab goes to the spies, and she strikes a deal with them, and she says, look, I know that God has given you this land. We have heard how God did miracles for you by drying up the Red Sea and destroying all your enemies. And this is what she says. She says, as soon as we heard it, this is key, our hearts melted and there was no spirit left in any man because of you. See, so Rahab didn't have to pretend that she was scared and like her. We don't have to pretend that we have everything together. You don't have to fake it. You don't have to tell, you can tell God that you're fearful, you're angry, you're tired, you're lonely, you're hurt, you're upset. You can be real with God. Mm -hmm. So it goes on to say, for the Lord your God, he is God in heavens above and on earth beneath. So she strikes this deal with the spies and say, when you attack Jericho, why not you spare me and my family? So upon hearing about God, Rahab chose to conf confess that the Lord was God. Rahab being a prostitute must have heard so many different things spoken about her. And she probably began to even believe those things, right? But upon hearing who God was, something stirred in her. This confidence stirred in her that she even began to believe in God, this pagan girl. And she even confessed it with her mouth. See, what you hear, you speak. Your hearing is demonstrated by your confession. It's what you say. In Proverbs 18, verses 21, it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. So I don't know what you've been hearing that has made you speak so negative about yourself, where you feel isolated, you feel unworthy, unloved, fearful, condemned, shame, even angry, even hurt. But I'm here to tell you today what God says about you so you can hear it, you can believe it, and you can confess it. God says you are blameless and free from accusation. God says you are loved. God says you are forgiven on the account of the name of Jesus Christ. God says you are redeemed. God says you are born of God and the evil one, even the devil, cannot even touch you. God says you are clean. God says you are free from forever from condemnation. You are victorious through Christ Jesus. You are established, anointed, and sealed by God. God says you are a son and a daughter of the Most High God. And that in Christ you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loves you. And we could go on and on about this, right? So upon hearing of what the, the Lord had done, it stirred such a belief in Rahab that she not only spoke it, but she confessed it and she acted upon it. So your hearing drives your confession, but it also drives your action. And your action is a demonstration of faith. So the people of Jericho had heard about how God had fought for Joshua and his people, but it was only Rahab who believed and acted. I tell you, I love this girl. Rahab is a talk is cheap kind of girl. I like her. She, is, she does not believe in talk alone, but she is one of those action women. I, I like to say that. And so after hearing what God had done for his people, she was not only going to sit down and cower in fear and let her family die. No, she not only hid the spies, but she also directed them to go a different route so they wouldn't be caught by the armies of Jericho. And she also put her family's life on the line for committing treason. Think about it. So this pagan girl who had never known God, a prostitute who was frowned upon by society, a woman who was the gossip of town, save a whole family, all because she believed in God. And so the story doesn't end there. Rahab's legacy, that's great. It's not only found in the book of Joshua, but we see her story in the New Testament. In James, we see Rahab as a teacher of faith by action. Rahab was used as an example by James to prove a point that our faith needs to be backed up by our actions and not just our words. In James 2 verses 25, it says, And in the same way was not also Rahab the prostitute 
Okay, they're still calling her a prostitute here. Justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way. Because Rahab had acted in such a faith, God saw it as righteous. You know, God is so pleased when we come to him in faith. In Hebrews 11 verses 6, it says that without faith, it is impossible to please him. So God loves it when you believe who he says he is. And he loves it when we simply act because we believe. This is what Rahab did. She acted out of her belief and God saw it as righteous. In Hebrews 11 verses 31, Rahab is listed in the hall of heroes of faith. And it says, by faith... Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. So Rahab here is seen as a hero of faith. And the story doesn't really stop there. This, this gets better. In Matthew, Rahab is mentioned again. Rahab marries Salmon. This is not a fish. It's an actual name of a person. They both become parents of Boaz, the same Boaz that marries Ruth. Boaz becomes the father of Jesse who is the father of King David, 14 generations later, and 14 generations later on, a man named Joseph is born, and this Joseph then becomes the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus Christ is born. Our Messiah, amen. What a story of great redemption. So, you know, if we look at all the scriptures of Rahab in both the Old Testament and the New Testament, in both Joshua, Hebrews, as well as um, James, they all described her as Rahab the prostitute. I mean, give our sister a break, right? <laughs> And I believe God left it intentionally in the Bible to show you that you don't have to fake it with who you are. You can pretend with every, everyone else, but with God, you can, you can be just you. He can use you despite your past. God can use you despite your reputation. God can use you despite your upbringing, despite your struggles, despite your weaknesses, despite your social status. God can use you despite you being an alcoholic, a drug addict, or even a prostitute. God can use you despite your strength, despite your gender, despite your ethnicity. God can use you. See, Rahab only had her reputation and her belief and God used her. So in Joshua, Hebrews and James, notice that Rahab is being referred to as a prostitute. But in the genealogy of Jesus Christ, written in Matthew, Rahab is just listed as Rahab. Rahab. Isn't that amazing? Why? Because in Jesus, he makes all things new. In Jesus, he removes every one of our sins and we are forgiven of all of our sins. And so that is my prayer for you this morning, that you would come just as, we, as you are, without any kind of pretense, giving him all that you have and all that you are, and allow him to use every part of you for a purpose that is greater than you, just like Rahab. And so imagine what it would be like if we had a church of people who were just authentic, people who were real with God and real with one another. Imagine how much healing, how much grace, how much forgiveness would be amongst spouses, amongst children and their parents, amongst friends, amongst people in the body of Christ. Imagine how attractive our church would look like to people who are outside our walls. Imagine how a church would look like to the Rahabs of the world, those people who are judged by their lifestyle or by their reputation or their life choices. How would our church look like? You know, as I was writing this sermon, um, my laptop kept autocorrecting Rahab's name to Rehab. And you know, <laughs> yes. Come to think of it, our church would become like a rehab, amen? Mm. Rahab's home, which was used as a place for selling her soul, was a place that God used to deliver her soul and save her soul. Her home became a rehab. She became a rehab. So God used the woman whose reputation was tainted who used someone whose reputation was frowned upon and condemned and turned her into a hero of faith, a savior for her family and a descendant of our Messiah, Jesus. God can do that for you too. Thank you.